morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of Voice of Radio. So today, we need to look at something a little bit weird. You see, Mitsuhiro Arita is a lovely man, and a very good artist who's drawn a lot of Pokemon trading cards. A man that I was lucky enough to be able to interview at the Dallas Regional Championships when I was lucky enough to attend. And he is most famous in Pokemon circles for actually drawing all of the Tag Team GXs. Well, he has gone and shared himself a work-in-progress picture of Celebi and Venusaur. Now, this alone is kind of cool. It's kind of interesting. We like it. However it actually gets a bit more interesting. Because, you see, it is on a template for Pikachu and Zekrom, except that is not the Pikachu and Zekrom we actually got. So it seems to be a beta template of Pikachu and Zekrom. Now, just very quickly, if we have a look at the artwork here, we can see that it is basically what we got nowadays. It's kind of rough and pencil drawn, but it's kind of beautiful and I love it. That's about what it ended up as. That's not really our focus in today's video. Our focus in today's video is having a look at what Pikachu and Zekrom was going to do and how, oh my goodness, it was gonna suck. Or at least not be quite so good. Shout out to the lovely Antoine Boulet for providing our translation here. And as a side note, Pikachu and Zekrom firmly entrenched as far as I'm concerned as one of the top three tag team GX's we've had it really is a phenomenal card so what does it actually do well the first attack here is completely new Pikachu and Zekrom only has two attacks so think of this as a nice little bonus it's literally just an extra attack that they added in and for one lightning energy Excelibolt 30 damage Attach up to two lightning energy cards from your hand to this Pokemon. So basically, you just get to accelerate lightning energy from your hand to this Pokemon. And I don't really like this very much. You see, we've seen attacks like this time and time again. So, something like the Verizon from Shining Legends. Although, to be fair, that actually does 30 damage as well. This doesn't do any damage. And the problem here, very simply, is that you're leaving a free prize Tag Team GX Pokemon in the active, attaching energy during your turn, kind of for your turn, and then nothing. It's then your opponent's turn. So you're giving them a free shot at your free prize, Tag Team GX, and just hoping they don't knock it out. I'm not a fan of attacks like this, because you're not really advancing your board state, other than attaching extra energy to your active, but it then goes to your opponent, and at worst, they get a free hit, and at best, they KO you, they take free prizes, and you're sitting there being like, wow, so I attached extra energy from my hand and got nothing in return. The reason I'm not out and out angry about this is because it's an extra attack. Pikachu and Zekrom has one attack and a GX attack, so it's kind of hard for me to be too upset because it really is just a bonus. Now, before we look at the other attacks, we can just have a quick look at the basics here. Obviously, it was always going to be a lightning Pokemon. That is the shared typing between them. You've still got 240 HP, weakness to fighting, resistance to metal, retreat cost of free. So you've not actually lost anything or gained anything in terms of the basics. This is as they always were. But it's the main attack here that really starts to show the difference between what it was going to be and what it is. Because what is great about Pikachu and Zekrom is full blitz. We love the GX attack, but full blitz is what makes the Pokemon roll. Free lightning energy, 150 damage, search your deck for up to free lightning energy and attach them to one of your Pokemon. And maybe you attach them to a bench Pokemon and then, hey, cool. Now they're ready to go. Or maybe you attach it to Pikachu and Zekrom itself. And then you've got enough energy for the GX attack. More on that in a moment. Well, it wasn't going to be like that. According to the lovely Antoine Boulet, what it was going to do for free lightning energy 
130 damage. We don't even need a translation, right? You can see there's no extra effect on the card. What is that? I'm sorry, but there is a little bit worse. And then there is so much worse, I might actually be feeling a little bit insulted. What we have here is 20 less damage and you don't get to search your deck for free lightning energy and attach them. And here's the thing, right? Why would we play this over Tapu Koko GX? You see, Tapu Koko GX also does 130 for free energy. But it's got a really nice ability that allows you to move all the energy over to it and move it into the active when you bench it. And okay, it has a bit less HP, but not that much worse. It's only dropping 70 HP. It has less retreat cost, you know, one lower. And it has no weakness. And it gives up two prizes rather than three. This would have ruined the card. Now, here's the thing to bear in mind, right? Pikachu and Zekrom is the cover Tag Team GX. It is the poster boy, boys, of the Tag Team GX movement. It is the one that was shown at the World Championships last year. It was the one that heralded in the age of tag teams. It is the one when they teased something at the end of the world video this year... It was Pikachu and Zekrom that were looking on. This is the poster child for tag teams. And it was gonna kind of suck. Its main attack, the one you would be using the majority of the time, would be exactly the same as Tapu Koko, except actually a little bit worse because Tapu Koko is lightning, lightning, colorless. And it would be giving up an extra prize and have a bad weakness. It would have been horrible. Because here's the thing, right? You can pay Pikachu and Zekrom's attack cost using Thunder Mountain Prism Star and Tapu Koko Prism Star. So essentially what you do here is you play Thunder Mountain to reduce your energy cost by one. You play Tapu Koko Prism Star to attach an energy from your discard pile. Then you attach an energy from your hand. That's free energy and you're off. But you can do that for Tapu Koko. And you can do that for Zero or a GX who not for nothing, right? 160 damage and okay you can't use it next turn but it's got a colorless energy in and it's 30 more damage now it was a little bit later but if this was the way pikachu and zekrom actually got printed then when raichu and alolan raichu came out it would have been a way bigger deal because tandem shock would have been amazing compared to what pikachu and zekrom would have been but here's the rub the gx attack is exactly the same the GX attack, free lightning energy, 200 damage. If you've got an extra free lightning energy attached, do 170 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. It would have been called Electro Bombers GX, whereas it actually came out as being called Tag Bolt GX. And it was called that in Japan because the set was called Tag Bolt. But other than that, it was the same attack. Except when would we have used it? Because the whole point of Pikachu and Zekrom is you've got Thunder Mountain Prism Star and Tapu Koko Prism Star to give you that one glorious turn to use full blitz, like straight away. But then full blitz is what gets the energy for the rest of the game. These lightning decks don't play a lot of energy acceleration. They play Tapu Koko, they play Thunder Mountain, and sure, they might play stuff like Tag Switch to move energy around. But they're not playing other energy acceleration. We're not in the age of electric here, where you could be accelerating lightning energy. Nobody's been playing this with Magnazone that lets you just attach as many from your hand as you like. We're doing it all off of full blitz. The success of Pikachu and Zekrom as one of the very best decks in the format from when it was released until today is predicated on full blitz being absolutely nuts. The idea that it wasn't going to have full blitz is weird to me because Pikachu and Zekrom GX was going to suck. It was going to be a really bad card. And yet it's actually ended up as one of the very best cards in the format. That to me, ladies and gentlemen, is incredibly strange.
But I'd like to know what you think about this. Now, they, they, of course, the thing to remember is this is just a prototype. This happens all the time. The Transformers folks who make the Transformers trading card game, they write brilliant articles on the official Facebook detailing all about card and game design. This is a normal, natural thing. This happens all the time. But I personally find it fascinating to look at what they originally wanted the card to do. And I thought you guys might want to see it as well. But for now... I'd like to know your take on this, so let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, me nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wassy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't even have any Pokemon in. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would you? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching... PTCG Radio.